Welcome. The theme for this yin yoga class is the famous star cluster known as the Pleiades. The yin sequence itself will include some forward folds such as half butterfly and full butterfly pose, a hip opener such as sleeping swan, a back bend which is seal pose, and we'll end the class with an option to practice Shavasana or resting pose and legs up the wall posture. So if you'd like to do legs up the wall, make sure you have some wall space available to do that and then gather up useful props. Blankets and pillows are always a good idea. And then we'll get started. So the practice starts with a little bit of grounding and I'm going to suggest that we try, I don't have a name for this pose, they call it um, reclined internal rotation pose. So it's a counter pose to, to external rotation and this practice has a lot of external rotation of the hips in it. So this is just an internal rotation of the posture you lay down. If you want to try this, you can just lay down on your back. Um, knees are bent, feet are on the floor, and then feet move out, move out wide, maybe to each edge of your mat here. And then the knees slowly just kind of just, just touch and just kind of hold themselves together like this. And if you need a little bit more um, padding underneath your torso or your head or your neck, maybe you need a pillow here. So this, will, this is where we'll stay for a few minutes. Hands, arms can be comfortably at your side, maybe far enough away from your waist so that your hands can comfortably just, just um, face up towards the ceiling. Or you can put one hand on your belly, another hand on your heart, and just remain here to get in touch with your breath. And if you're not interested in starting off the practice in this pose, you can always start off in a seated, medita seated meditation or some other position that's comfortable here. The idea here is to check in. And by checking in, you're checking out. And by checking out, you're letting go of your thoughts for today, your to-do list, what you had to do, what you did earlier today, what you're going to do later today, let it all just evaporate and fall away. And one of the one of the many intentions that you can set is the intention to be here now. And to help with this, it's maybe a good idea to notice things that are happening in the present moment. So the breath, the breath that's happening in our lungs right now is happening in the present moment. The other idea is to kind of check in and See if there's any little kind of aches and pressure points and sensations in the body. So later on, when we get settled into the long-held yin postures, I'm going to talk about the most famous star cluster from human history right now. It's, it's a little, little cluster called the Pleiades, and it's, it's up in the winter skies, very prominent here. And so Probably a lot of people are aware of it and may, may not even know that it's the Pleiades. It's a small cluster, but you can see it by eye. It's not a big thing. It's not like a constellation or an asterism that takes off, off a huge part of the sky. It's tiny. But you can see the individual stars. You can maybe use this idea of a star cluster, the Pleiades. To do a little bit of grounding here, so imagine your body is a cluster of stars. All those little aches and pains, all those little pressure points and areas of the body that are maybe kind of bugging you or giving you concern. Imagine that as a star. Your body is made up of those stars. Your body becomes, metaphorically speaking, its, it's, its own star cluster as you breathe, as you inhale, and as you exhale here. And then just notice, just notice those stars. What are, what are the characteristics of those stars? Are they big, are they bright, are they small? And we'll stay here. 
just for a couple more breaths, just again, inviting yourself onto your mat, into your practice, into your body. And then at some point, if you've taken a seated position or if you've taken this internally rotated resting posture, you bring your feet back in close and do bring yourself up to a seated position. Now, make a cross-legged seat if you can, or you can sit back on your heels. If you need to sit up on a little bit of height, then grab some height like I'm doing. I'm grabbing a folded blanket here. Come to a comfortable cross-legged seat. We'll do a few, um, few warm-up exercises before we get into the more longer yin postures. We'll try a little bit of cat and cow rolling, only a seated version this time. So instead of doing cat and cow on hands and knees, there's several different ways you can do cat and cow. You can do it seated here. So first you gotta make sure your seat is solid here. And then maybe brace your hands on your knees here. And then we'll come into what I call seated cat. Seated cat is when you round your spine towards the wall behind you. And what I'm thinking about here is I'm taking the top of my hip bone here and I'm trying to tilt it back as I bend, as I bend my torso. Head and neck can tilt forward. And again, I'm using my knees to kind of help brace myself so I don't fall backwards here. So this is seated cat pose. And then you can slowly bring yourself back to neutral and come into a seated cow pose. Seated cow pose is a back bend. So you reach your sternum forward and you try to tilt as much it will, as it will tilt forward, the top of your pelvic bone, your hip bone forward. And you can maybe look up if you want to with your head and your neck, but you're basically bringing your spine into extension. So this is seated cow pose. And then when you're, if you're like, you got the hang of both of these postures, you start to flow back and forth between one and the other, and you can sink your breath with this if you want to, or maybe you do a whole breath per pose, or maybe your breath is just wanting to be some kind of random natural thing, in which case you can let it, because this is a yin practice. There's, there's really not a lot of formal breath work to be done, only if you want to. I'll show you what this looks like from a different angle just so you can see. It can be pretty subtle. This doesn't have to be dramatic. What, again, what you're focused on is bringing your spine into extension and then into flexion. And you're trying to kind of get your, your pelvic bone involved in this so you, can, you feel it kind of rolling forward and rolling back here. So maybe a couple more cycles of this. And then when you've had enough of this, bring yourself back onto your back. We'll do a pose here that I call reclined eagle pose. This is still part of the warm up, so there's a little element of muscle engagement and yang in this warm up. So make your way onto your back. Bend your knees, put your feet back onto the ground here, about hip width apart, pretty close into your hips here. And then take your right leg, bring it in and wrap the right thigh around on top of the left thigh here. And so you, your left shin is on the outside of your, or right shin is outside of your left shin. Some of you might be able to wrap your right foot underneath your left shin here. Mine doesn't do that. So this is as far as I go. And then Extend your arms out wide to either side. Bring them back together and wrap the right arm underneath the left so they cross above the elbows. Bend the elbows. Either bring your hands to your shoulders or continue to wrap your forearms and see if you can catch your fingers. Or maybe you'll be able to continue to wrap your forearms and make prayer hands here. But that's not really important. Maybe, maybe this feels better here. Whatever version you have found of this, gently extend your elbow up and back towards the wall behind you until everything feels stuck. 
Maybe you don't have to go very far for that to happen here. So that's the yang here. And then you can kind of just squeeze in your legs if you want to. Or you can keep your feet on the floor here. So this is this is reclined eagle here. And then just stay here for one more breath or so. And then go ahead and release everything. We have the other side of that to do. So feet back on the floor. This time the left leg lifts, wrap the left thigh on top of the right thigh. Make your version of eagle legs. Again, maybe your foot catches underneath the shin there, but mine doesn't here. Arms out wide. This time it's the opposite arms cross. So the left arm underneath the right. Find your version of this. Hands come to shoulders, catch the fingers, maybe the prayer hands. Elbows move up and with a little bit of oomph until you feel stuck. Not pain, but just stuck here. And then, if you want to, you can lift your knees up towards your torso just a little bit here. So recline eagle on this side. And then a couple of breaths here. And then release your arms, release your legs. That was sort of a little bit of a warm up. Now we'll start the yin sequence proper here. And we'll start it off with a pose known as half butterfly. So come to a seated position, both legs extended up front. Again, if you have a lot of tightness in your back body, your back legs and your back torso, sitting up on some height is a pretty good idea. Here. So grab blankets, grab blocks to sit on here. Leave the right leg stay straight. Maybe move the right leg out to the side. Bend the left knee. Take the left knee out to the side so you're externally rotating the left leg. Draw the left heel in slowly and carefully towards the center of your hip until it stops, wherever it does for you. So it might not make it to your hip. It might stop somewhere out here. This knee is achy. Then take some extra padding, stuff it underneath that leg to keep that knee stable. But if it's fine, just floating there, or maybe it's on the floor, then it can stay there. So we're, we're setting up for setting up for the first side of half butterfly. Grow tall through your torso. By the way, you can decide to stay here with a nice neutral spine if you don't want to forward fold today. And just enjoy the mild hip opener here. Otherwise, if you would like to fold forward, then Hinge from your hip first until it stops and then soften and relax the muscles in your torso to let your spine round whatever amount. So it may look more like this for you. And this is your half butterfly. Some people, maybe they go a little bit farther. Maybe if you're, if you're really flexible, maybe your torso is laying on your leg and you're not feeling anything, in which case move the leg out of the way so your torso can keep going down towards the floor until it actually finally finds a stopping point here. And then we'll stay here. We'll stay here for a few minutes. So I'll spend this time to remind you about the principles of yin. So yin yoga is a slower moving practice where we're trying to exercise connective tissue, physically speaking. It's also a good mental and emotional type of, type of meditation in practice. And in fact, a lot of people get maybe more benefit out of that than the physical benefit here. The fundamental premise is, is we're trying to let the muscles be quiet and then hold the traction that we create for a long period of time, so minutes instead of a few breaths here. In order to do that, we break down the mechanics of practice into these three ideas. And the first idea is to make your shape, which is called finding your edge. You move your body into a posture where you're creating your own traction here. And it'll look different than what other people do here. So maybe in this posture, you're, you're kind of leaning forward, you're feeling a lot, and you can't go anymore. Well, that's probably your stopping point. Maybe you're feeling too much, in which case you start grabbing pillows and blankets and bolsters to put under your torso and your head so that you can build, you can have a support here. 
or maybe you're fine just hanging mid in midair. This is this is all in determining where your edge is at here. The second principle is called stillness, and stillness means when you find when you find that place where you the muscles are soft, you're starting to feel pressure and traction and some sort of sensation that's telling you that you have reached your point of resistance here. Then you stay, and that's hard. And that's hard to do because we're 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 creatures of motion. We're a culture of motion of action, and don't quite understand this stillness business. So it requires a little bit of patience and fortitude and overriding the urge to want to move. Although if you are feeling pain, then it's good to maybe move out of the posture to keep from getting injured. But if you're just feeling pressure, and it can be uncomfortable pressure, then you stay here and your edge might change, so maybe after a while you don't feel much anymore. So you can allow yourself to re-relax your muscles and sink a little bit more deeply here. So I'm holding postures here for about three or four minutes per posture. Um, you can always come out of a posture early. You don't have to stay the whole time in the beginning. After a while, maybe you get comfortable with the three or four minutes. Maybe you can go even longer. Maybe you want to stay for six minutes, in which case, pause the video and stay for a little bit longer. We've been here, though, for a goodly amount of time. We've been here for a little over three minutes. So maybe it's time to come up if you forward fold the whole time. So plant your hands on the ground. Use your hands in your arms to do the lifting of your torso back up to neutral. And now if you're experiencing the achy rebound of that posture, do a little movement to work it out. Maybe just some, maybe just some twists to begin with, or maybe even a gentle back bend. Reach back with your hands to brace yourself and just lift your sternum up towards the ceiling. And then slowly bring that bent leg forward. Maybe a little bit of shaking out here. We've got the other side, half butterfly to do. So now it's the other leg. So left leg is straight, maybe move it out to the side a few inches. Bend the right knee, externally rotate that right leg out to the side. Bring the right foot in towards the center of your hip as far as it goes until it says stop for you. And so it'll be in different places for each one of us. And again, pay attention to what this knee is telling you. It can feel a little bit of pressure, but it can't be sharp, biting, burning pain. So maybe that needs a little bit of, of support here. You can just stay here. It's always an option to just keep your spine neutral. But if you would like to forward fold, then grow your spine long just to engage the core muscles in your torso. Hinge over the straight leg first with your hips, and you can always bend and soften this knee if there's too much strain in the back of this leg. You can always you can even put a prop underneath this knee to keep it bent here. And then fold forward however far you need to until you stop. Maybe gather up props if you need them. And then give yourself permission to relax and settle. This can be done using your breath. This is why this is a good yoga practice is you can use your breath to help calm the nerves. And as you calm your nerves, your muscles will slowly quiet down, and as they quiet down, then you can maybe go, and you probably sink a little bit more deeply into the posture, and then we'll settle in here for a few more minutes on this side. Third principle of practice is called time, and that's the staying in of the postures for several minutes. This is the point to my stopwatch here, is to try to stay and let, let the traction soak into the joint capsules and to, to all the, the connective tissues, the fascia and the ligaments and the joint capsules here and the, and the myofascia. So I talk about fascia as if it's separate from the muscle, but you can't separate muscle from fascia. It, it forms an inter a weaving system here. So when you stretch fascia you, fascia, you stretch muscle, and when you stretch muscle, you stretch fascia. We're just creating an emphasis in a yin class, 
in that instead of just focusing on what exactly the muscle cells need, which is what we do in a yawn class, we're also saying, okay, now we need to pay attention to what the what the connective tissue systems need. And it seem, they seem to respond well to this, these longer holds here. Again, if you're here, then you kind of use your mental focus to evaluate, maybe become that star cluster again. Notice the stars in your body, i.e. the places that you're, you're stuck, places that you feel pressure. That's a star, maybe it is a star in the star cluster. Send some breath there. Notice if it's just uncomfortable pressure or if it's sharp abiding pain that needs to be addressed here. And continue to breathe here. So we have about, have about another minute here or so. So probably the most famous star cluster in the night sky is an object whose Messier designation is 45. So it's among amateur astronomers, it's often referred to as M45, but um, more popularly, it's known as the Pleiades star cluster. And it's, it is a true cluster in that most stars that you see right next to each other just hap randomly happen to be in the same line of sight. They're actually not close together at all. The stars in the Pleiades are actually close together in that they're a true cluster. So all of those, which means all of those stars formed out of the same primordial cloud of gas or nebula of gas. So they all, they are really all related to each other. They formed and now they're just kind of spreading out, spreading their wings and moving through the universe here. So they're related. They're related to one another. They're a true cl cluster. Technically, these clusters of stars are known as open clusters. And it's one, of, it's one of the few open clusters, one of the closest ones to the sun and the earth. And that's why we can see it so well and it's so distinct in, in the night sky in the months of, of January and February. I call it a, win a winter cluster, but if you're in the southern hemisphere, then it's a southern and it's a summer cluster here. So just one more breath on this side. And then if you're still folding forward, go ahead and slowly bring yourself all the way up. And then take care of that reverberation that you might be feeling. You can slowly bring the bent leg straight, you can make a few motions with the feet. You can do a little bit of, of core work. Maybe I'll suggest um, I'll suggest the, the hinge maneuver. So you make your way out to your back, bend your knees, draw your knees into your chest, and then extend your legs straight up towards the ceiling in kind of a waterfall pose position. Arms on either side, just hands on the floor to kind of brace yourself. Engage the muscles in your core and then slowly lower your legs down to the ground. Take a few breaths to do this. So you're trying to lower them with control until the heels actually touch down. And then bend your knees, roll over to one side, come back up to sitting. We've got one more forward fold to do, and this is this is full butterfly pose. So for full butterfly, again, you start sitting on a blanket. Legs are extended out front. Bend both knees now. Lower both knees out to either side. Bring the bottoms of your feet together. And then adjust the distance between your heels and, and hips for, for taste, if you will. Maybe if you like them real, in really close, you can bring them in really close. I usually make a diamond pattern with my legs. So I kind of make, with my shins and my thighs, make kind of a square or a diamond pattern here. And then again, you can brace your knees with props if you need them. And you can also just sit here with a neutral spine. But once again, the idea is to fold forward. So again, I kind of like to use a little bit of yang here in that I initially engage the muscles in my core to lengthen my spine or bring it to a nice neutral posi position. I tilt my hips, my pelvic bone forward 
till it stops. And now, now I go into yin mentality. I just soften and round my spine for as far forward as it goes again here. So this is, this is the posture. This is full butterfly. Maybe you're getting really tired of forward folds and you'd like to do something different now. So you can here, if you're, if you're wanting to do another forward fold, just go ahead and stick it out here in full butterfly. You can do what's called a reclined butterfly. And that is, instead of folding forward, just lean back and just lay on the floor with the butterfly legs here. In this position, your spine is nice and neutral, so it gets to just kind of, kind of recover from all that powerful forward folding here. But you still get the gentle hip opener of the butterfly legs in this posture. So this is a good break if you're saying to yourself, well, I'm kind of really done with the forward folds here. Otherwise, if you think you can manage one more forward fold, then just continue in, in the full butterfly here. This is the last forward fold of the sequence. We're just kind of getting them all out of the way here. And we have a, have a couple more minutes here. Let's come back to your breath. Notice the stars, the star cluster of your body. Notice the primary sensations you're feeling, the secondary ones, the third ones that you're not really even noticing, but they're there. And interestingly enough, this is kind of interest related to the Pleiades. So one of the, one of the common names for the Pleiades, the star cluster, is known as the Seven Sisters. And there's, there's, that's, that's more human sociology and human history. This star cluster was noticed throughout human existence because it's so characteristic and therefore all of our, all of our human cultures have stories about it. Um, a lot of them about, about sisters. That's why they're called the seven sisters. And indeed, if you look at it carefully, it has several bright stars in it. And for some people, they see seven. A lot of times, some people see six bright stars. Maybe if you have really good vision, you might see nine stars. Turns out there's hundreds of stars in this cluster. Most of them are too dim for us to see. We only see the, very, the handful of very bright ones. Those are the ones that make up the characteristic these these five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten star, bright stars that you see. Those are the biggest and the brightest stars in the cluster that actually contains hundreds. In fact, some astronomers estimate there's three or four hundred stars in the entire cluster. Again, most of them too small, too dim to see here. Just a couple more breaths here. Maybe, maybe do a final breath here where you just soften one last time here in full butterfly. And then we'll come out. So plant your hands. Use your hands to bring yourself all the way back up. That was the last back bend here, or forward bend here. Bring your knees up, extend your legs forward, maybe flex and point your feet a few times. Any other kind of little motions that you need to do to work out the kinks of this posture. But I'll go ahead and start talking about the next posture, which is a hip opener. It's called sleeping swan. A more common name that you might hear for it is it's a yin variation of pigeon pose. So you'll make your way onto hands and knees. And then from hands and knees, bring the left foot up in between your hands. So you're, you're starting out in this low lunge. It's the back knee back a little bit. And you may need to put padding underneath that back knee, but once we get down into, into Sleeping Swan, maybe, maybe you'll need padding elsewhere. Start working the left foot over to the right side of your yoga mat. And as you do that, you'll start lowering this left knee. You'll start lowering your hips towards the ground as far as they go until they stop. Some people, they stop when they hit the ground. For some people, they stop pretty high in the air, and if that's creating a lot of 
a lot of desperate instability, place props underneath your torso, underneath your hips, so that you can feel stable here. So maybe it'll take, it might take several blankets, several, several pillows, maybe a bolster to do that here. Adjust this heel in. So if you're feeling pain in this knee, this is a hip opener, not a knee opener. Bring the heel in closer to the hip. If you're not feeling anything and you're wanting to get a more intense version of this, bring the heel away from the hip here. You can do swan for a moment, maybe don't. And that's just basically doing a little bit of a mini back bend here. And then for sleeping swan, slowly lower your torso. You do this slowly so that you stop when you should stop. So maybe you have to stay up on straight arms. Maybe you make it to forearms. Maybe you make it all the way to the floor, or maybe you put some pillows underneath your torso here. So you find your version of this here. And then we'll stay. For a few minutes here. Come back to your breath. Allow everything to soften and settle. Maybe make some minor adjustments so that this becomes your pose here. And if you're deciding that there's no way this is your pose because there's too much pain, bring yourself out and you can always do a modified version. This is called reclined pigeon pose. I call it eye of the needle or figure four, um, eye of the needle pose. Bend both knees, put the left ankle on the right thigh, and then draw the right leg in, clasp your hands behind the thigh, or if you can reach, and it's okay with this knee, hands in front of the shin, and then just pull everything in until you're feeling something. By the way, some of us feel a lot with this foot on the floor, so this is a perfectly good modified form. Otherwise, just come back to this version of pigeon pose here. Soften and settle. We'll bring ourselves back to back to the Pleiades, which are, are very high overhead in most reasonable latitudes, north and south too, during during Again, in the Northern Hemisphere, there would be the winter months. So the months of December, January, February, even March, they're still pretty high overhead. And they're a small cluster, they're a small cluster. And, um, but you can actually tell that they're individual stars. You're seeing the brighter ones, as I was saying. The actual cluster has several hundred stars in it, but most people can make out about six stars on average even though they're known as the Seven Sisters, and, and there's, it's kind of a mystery as to why they're called Seven Sisters when there's only six, but that's kind of open to human interpretation and doesn't really have anything to do with the stars themselves. But astronomically speaking, the bright stars that you do see, they're, they're very characteristically young, bright, big stars. So, this open cluster, known as the Pleiades, that's close to us, one of the closer clusters that we can see with the naked eye, the cluster is only 444 light years away, which is actually pretty far away. There are a lot of individual stars that are closer to us, but the cluster, this cluster is kind of still in, considered in our stellar neighborhood, even 444 light years away. Just a reminder, a light year is 6 trillion miles. So 444 times 6 trillion. That's how far these stars are away. They're pretty far away, that's why you can't see the fainter ones, but you can see the really big bright ones. The six, seven, nine big bright stars that you can see, they're all B-type giant stars. Fairly young. So it is believed that the Pleiades is about about a hundred million years old, which is not really that old as far as astronomy is being. Um, the sun itself is, eight, is five billion years old. We got to come out of this side of Sleeping Swan. 
So if you're still in it, plant your hands, bring your torso up first. Maybe try swan here for a moment. And then plant your hands, tuck the back toe, lift the back knee, engage the muscles in your body and see if you can press yourself up into downward facing dog. And then when you get there, maybe take your dog for a walk here. So this is a yang pose. So we're engaging all our muscles here to just kind of work out the stagnation that developed during pigeon pose. And you might be saying to yourself, well, I don't like downward facing dog, then do something else. Take some time to work out the kinks here. And I'll get to explaining the other side of sleeping swan. So when you are ready, come back to your hands and knees and it's the other leg. So it's the right leg that comes up in between your hands inch the left knee back and again decide if you need padding there give yourself padding if you need it bring that right foot over to the left side of your mat and then begin to lower the right knee lower your hips maybe put padding or or a block underneath your hips and that front thigh maybe move up into swan here just to stretch the front side of your torso and then very slowly start to work yourself down to your stopping point. Maybe your stopping point is with arms extended. Maybe your stopping point is with on your elbows. Maybe your stopping point is all the way down. So you're exploring this. And then say to yourself, well, okay, I need a stopping point that I can stay in for a couple of minutes here. So if it's, if your stopping point is too desperate, You'll only be able to stay for a few breaths and then you'll have to like come out. So start with a little bit of a lighter edge here. So all of these stars came out of the same cocoon of material about a hundred million years ago. So Roughly speaking, they're fairly young stars compared to the sun, although they're not nearly as young as the stars in the belt of Orion. Those three bright stars are only about five million years old. So Pleiades stars, considerably older, but not that much. They're much bigger. So the bright stars that you see, they're about 10 times the mass of the sun, somewhere between five to 10 times. And because of that, they're, they're bigger, they're burning through their nuclear fuel much faster than the sun does. So they'll actually not last as long as the sun because they're too big, too, too big. You have to have a star the size of the sun in order to last the 10 billion years or so that the sun is actually gonna last here. But the Pleiades have been around Pleiades have been around for a while. They've been around through all of human existence. And because of that, they're famous. They're famous in our human social and cultural circles. In other words, all cultures, they're visible from any part of the world that ever had humans living there. The only place that I think you can't see the Pleiades is Antarctica. And there were no human cultures that grew up in Antarctica to make stories about the Pleiades. All other cultures have their stories about the Pleiades. You have to rem remember that ancient humans used stars as calendar markers, as navigational tools and as guides to still tell stories. And all of those get wrapped up into the stars we see at night. We modern Westerners don't realize that anymore because we go home, we read a book or sit in front of the television, but the ancient peoples, all they had at night to entertain themselves were the stars. That's always something. And so that's where these stories come from. Few more breaths here. So the word Pleiades comes from, from Greece, from Greek mythology. And the term seven sisters also comes from Greek mythology. So those of us come from a Western European background, 
we're familiar with Greek mythologies and the Greek stories, so that's maybe the first story that we need to tell about the Seven Sisters. We're kind of getting done with this side of Swan, though. So maybe we'll come out of Swan here. Go ahead and bring yourself all the way up. And then come out however you would like. Now, it could be downward facing dog again. Maybe you're saying to yourself, meh, maybe not downward facing dog. So you come out some other way slowly here and then work out the kinks here. We'll do a little bit of a counter pose called deer pose. Deer pose is the yin posture in its own, own right, but we'll use it as a counter pose before we get into the next long held yin posture. Come to seated again. Maybe sit up on a little bit of height, legs out in front. Okay, bend the, left, the right knee. Bring the right heel on the outside of the right hip. For some of us, it's, this will be easy. For some of us, it won't be so easy. Bend the left knee, bring the left heel on the inside of the hip. So this right leg is internally rotated, which is the opposite of pigeon and butterfly. And the other, other leg is externally rotated here. You can just stay here in deer for a few breaths and maybe feel the awkward pressure that some of us are feeling in this internally rotated leg here. Spine can be straight. You can do a few gentle twists if you like. And then at some point, bring your legs back out forward. You gotta do the other side of deer. So this time, bend the left knee, bring the left heel on the outside of the left hip. The left knee can move out a lot wide if it needs to. Bend the right knee, bring the right heel in towards the center here. And you can just stay here and hang out here for two, three, four breaths or so. You can, you can fold forward if you want to. You can do the twists again. If you like, just kind of gentle twists to either side. This again is to get the internal rotation into this left leg here. So maybe one more breath and then slowly bring yourself out and maybe recover from that. Next yin posture is, is seal pose. So seal is a back bend. So make your way onto your belly, legs comfortably extended out beside you, behind you here. They can be together, they can be met with part, something that feels okay here. Bend your elbows, bring your hands on either side of your torso, turn your fingers to face away from your torso slightly. So you're, you're dialing your fingers at a certain angle out towards the side. And then from here, Press yourself up into a back bend. This is seal. Lock your elbows off. So you're trying to stack your torso weight through your arm bones. That's why elbows are, are locked here. And you can adjust your hands. Maybe you, they go up farther if this is too much of a back bend. Maybe they come in closer to your hips if you want more of a back bend here. This is seal pose. For some of us, this is maybe a bit too much. So if it is for you, you can come down into Sphinx. Sphinx, just come down onto your elbows here. Perfectly good back bend. That's probably a little bit more accessible and less intense here. So we'll stay here a few minutes, either in Sphinx or if you think this is acceptable to you, Come up here and stay here in seal pose here. Head can be back. You get a nice stretch in the throat if your head is back, or you can just let your head just hang forward here. You can also hold it up, but it takes muscles to hold the head up here. So the classic stories about the Pleiades from Greek mythology is one that relates relates the fact that they are, they are related to each other. So they're considered seven young sisters. And they're the daughters of Pleione and Atlas. And Atlas is a, is a titan. So he's, he's, he's the guy that holds the earth up on his shoulders. And so he and Pleione, they have, have these daughters. And so they're the daughters of, of these people. And in mythology, the story goes that 
the great hunter Orion um, was noticed and was attracted to these seven sisters, so he began to pursue them. And they were not interested in being pursued by Orion, so they pleaded to the gods to help them escape from his pursuit. And so the Greek gods turned them all into doves and allowed them to fly up into the heavens, and there they became stars. That's the classic Greek version of the Seven Sister Stories. All, country, all cultures have their version of some story about the Pleiades. Most of them involved seven female figures. There might be seven sisters, seven wives, seven daughters. I found a few examples of where they're actually brothers rather than sisters, but most likely, most likely the story has them as seven sisters. There's, an, there's a Kiowa story, Native American tribe in the Great Plains of North America. And there's a Kiowa story that talks about this village, Native Americans next to a river. And there's seven, seven small girls playing in the river when out of, out of the brush comes this mighty grizzly bear and starts, that starts chasing them. And so they start running for their lives away from the grizzly bear. And they start calling to the great spirit to save them. So the great spirit starts to uplift the ground that they're currently on. And it creates a small hill that gets higher and higher and higher. And the grizzly bear tries to crawl up to the, up the hill to get this, the small girls. And the grizzly bear basically claws into the hill and slides back down. It's too steep. It's too steep. So it keeps trying to claw its way up. And every time it claws its way up, it slides back down the hill. And it leaves these great claw marks in the side of the hill. And it creates what today we now know as Devil's Tower in Western Wyoming. That's the place. And the little girls, well, the hill became so tall that they reached heaven, they reached space. And so there they were saved and they were turned in, were turned into stars. So a couple more breaths here in your back then. Maybe you're down in Sphinx here. So either Sphinx or Seal. One more breath and then at the end of this breath, slowly lower yourself all the way down to the ground. Take your time here. Notice the reverberation. We did a lot of forward folds. And so now a big back bend after that can be, can feel pretty intense here. You can rest your head on your hands to let your spine stay in a neutral position at some point. Bring your torso back up, come to all fours. You can come into a wide-legged child's pose. I call this warrior four pose. So knees are about met width apart. Bring your hips back towards your heels as far as they go until they stop for you. Lower your torso, extend your arms forward. And this might feel like a nice counter pose right after that deep back bend here. So just hang out here for a couple of breaths here. And just, if you're feeling a lot in your spine, in your torso, then it's just telling you that you did some work. You did some work in that back bend. So maybe one more breath here and then slowly bring yourself up. And then a little bit of integration before we move into the resting pose. We'll try a seated twist. So again, come to seated, legs out in front. Bend the left knee, bring the left foot on the outside of the right leg. Plant and root that left foot down. The right leg can stay straight or you can bend the right knee bring the right heel on the outside of the left hip. So again, kind of maybe rearrange this so this foot is planted, so your hips are nice and planted. Grow tall through your torso and begin to twist towards the left. So you can take your right arm and wrap the right arm around the left knee. Left hand comes behind you as a little bit of a stable anchor. Although you're just twisting gently from your spine here. And 
twist from your upper spine, your middle spine, your low spine, if it's okay with your head and your neck. Maybe look out past your back shoulder here. And maybe just stay for one or two more breaths here. Again, this is just a, a quick integration twist here. When you're ready to come out, slowly bring yourself forward. Maybe, maybe do a quick counter twist. Now we're twisting to the other side. Extend your legs out again, and then all that on the other side. So bend your right knee. Put your right foot on the outside of your left leg. Root that right foot. Left leg can stay straight if it needs to. But if you wish, you can bend that left leg. Bring the left heel on the outside of the right hip. Root through your hips, root through this foot, grow tall through your torso, and then begin to twist over to the right. Again, you can use the left elbow to wrap around the right knee, and then right hand maybe behind you to just kind of stabilize you here a little bit. And then explore, explore this twist for one or two more breaths here. And then maybe bring yourself back forward. A little bit of a counter twist. Bring your legs out long here. And then we'll set up, we'll set up for Shavasana, for our final resting posture. It can be seated in meditative posture. It can be lying on the ground, just in a traditional form of Shavasana. But like I mentioned earlier, you can try legs up the wall here. And so you can, you'll need a little bit of wall space. I have a blanket here and you can have a blanket or a pillow or maybe nothing, maybe some nice gentle padding underneath your torso and your head. Third thing to do is to get into legs up the wall. So you sit kind of sideways against the wall. And then the hardest part is rolling your legs up the wall. So it might take a few times so that you get your legs up, trying to get your hips as close to the wall as possible. They might not actually touch. It depends on how straight you can get your legs and how much tightness you get here. And I like to have the padding underneath my pelvic bone here. That's why I put the, put the blanket here. You might want to have more padding under the rest of your torso. Maybe you want to have a little bit of a pillow underneath your head here. And then arms extended softly and comfortably alongside, along your sides here. And then just begin to soften here. So this is the final release pose. Once again, revisit your intention and once again, let go of your thoughts and give yourself permission to be in the present moment. And so come back to this idea of noticing your breath. Some of us can actually feel our, our blood circulation, our pulse. So if you're somebody that can do that, Notice, notice your actual heart beating, your actual blood flowing through your veins. That's too subtle, so I will use the breath here. Just notice other sensations. They may be subtle. They may be not so subtle. Allow them, allow them to be your personal stars here. So instead of them being annoying, these sensations that you're feeling, acknowledge them as a beautiful part of you. And that's why, that's why we bring up this star cluster visualization is if these stuck points, these pressure points, if you visualize them as this beautiful, brilliant star, maybe that'll change our attitude. Maybe it'll change our perspective on how we think about our own beings. And then we maybe begin to soften. So soften your face, release your jaw, relax your tongue, soften the muscles around your eye sockets and that space in between your eye sockets. 
Soften the crown of your head and the skin around your ears. Let your thoughts be fuzzy here. And then continue to expand that softness down through the rest of your torso. So neck, shoulders, shoulder blades softening, arms soft, hands released, fingers released. Rib cage is soft, your abdomen down through your pelvic bone, your hips, grounded and soft. And then your legs softening, thighs and knees, shins, calves, ankles, heels, the tops and the bottoms of your feet, all the toes, the tips of your toes. Send a little breath there, send a little love there. Let the tips of your toes feel like they're a star, a beautiful star cluster. And then just remain here, reside with your breath in the present moment for a few more breaths. Practicing legs up the wall. Maybe bend your knees and place your feet against the wall. And then you might be able to slide yourself away from the wall a few inches to make it easier to roll over to one side. So bend your knees. Roll gently over to one side. When you get there, stay there for a moment. Stay there long enough to give yourself a big deep thank you for your efforts and for your practice, but also a big deep thank you for you, your unique being, your embodiment in this universe. The universe is ecstatically joyful that you are here. And then when you're ready, slowly bring yourself up to a comfortable seat. When you get there, Make sure you feel stable. Grow your spine nice and neutral, and then bring your hands together in front of heart center. So I'll end practice with an OM. You can join in or just simply listen to my voice. Starlight in me honors the inner starlight in you. Namaste. Stay.